Let me see. Good, uh, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Capital One Orange Bowl Selection Day press conference. Uh, we're going to get started here in just a moment, but just some quick announcements. Um, on the call today, you'll hear from our two head coaches of the 90th Capital One Orange Bowl, Kirby Smart of number six, Georgia, and Mike Norvell of number five, Florida State. We're going to get started with Kirk, Coach Smart here in a moment. Um, but before we get started, media are reminded to apply for credentials at orangebowl.org slash credentials and reserve hotel rooms at our media headquarters, the Lay Meridian Dania Beach at Fort Lauderdale Airport. Room reservations, uh, links will be available after completing the media application process. Again, all this information can be found at orangebowl.org backslash credentials. A recording of this press conference, along with an audio transcription, will be available on the CFP media portal shortly following our conclusion here. Uh, Florida State, who will be the home team for this game as the ACC representative, comes in with a record of 13-0, champions of the Atlantic Coast Conference. Uh, this will be FSU's 11th appearance in the Capital and Orange Bowl, the most of any ACC team owning a 5-5 five and five record. Georgia, the visiting team in this game, comes in with a record of 12-1, and one, finishing first in the SEC East. The Bulldogs are making their fifth appearance in the Capital One Orange Bowl, first since 2021. This year's game will be played on Saturday, December 30th at Hard Rock Stadium, televised by ESPN at 4 p.m. Eastern. And uh, before we open it up with Coach Smart, I do want to pass it over to Orange Bowl CEO Eric Palms for some brief remarks. Thanks, Mike. Uh, we are so excited to have this exciting matchup in the 90th Capital One Orange Bowl between number five, Florida State, and number six, Georgia. It is the highest ranked non-playoff Capital One Orange Bowl in the CFP era, topping last year's number six versus number seven, Clemson, Tennessee matchup. Uh, we're very excited to host ACC champion Florida State Seminoles. Had an amazing season under Coach Norvell finishing an undefeated at 13-0. and And then the SEC, obviously, is also a tremendous partner of, of ours. Thrilled to have the SEC now for six years in a row. Georgia, what can you say? An incredible run the last few years. In fact, we had them here in 2021 playing Michigan in the national semifinal. And we congratulate Coach Kirby Smart and the Georgia Bulldogs. Uh, the fan excitement and demand is, is certainly there. Uh, tickets are almost out here, of course, the schools have their allotments and uh, very few suites remain. So we're eager to host these two teams, uh, number five, Florida State, number six, Georgia. National Spotlight will shine bright at Hard Rock Stadium on Saturday, December 30th. Back to you, Mike. Thank you, Eric. Uh, now we'll welcome in Coach Smart to say a few words, and then we will open it up for questions. So, Coach Smart, why don't you start us off here? The floor is yours. Thank you. Yeah. First, thanks for those kind words, uh, Eric. And uh, we at University of Georgia are uh, uh, honored and excited to get to go down to uh, sunny South Florida um, and looking forward to an incredible environment. Um, although, obviously, our players are very disappointed today with uh, uh, the outcome of our game uh, last night. Um, we are looking forward to this opportunity. I don't think um, there's another team that, 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 you know, we would love to be able to go compete against in Florida State. I have so much respect for uh, Mike, his staff, the job he's done there. I grew up uh, going to Tallahassee every day of my life uh, from where I grew up in South Georgia. And to watch what he's done with that Florida State program is just incredible. Um, I know firsthand how hard it is to have an undefeated season. It is hard. Uh, it's hard to win games um, in any conference. It's hard to win games uh, repeatedly. And, and he he had a uh, perfect season and won every game. That's really hard to do. So uh, a lot of uh, kudos and congrats to he and his staff and his team and his players with all they've overcome and the, the team he's uh, assembled. Um, this should be a great matchup. Uh, two uh, Giants in college football across history and uh, recently. And uh, I'm, I, I, I always worry about when you get in bowl games of the matchups you get to have. So this matchup is really exciting. Uh, and I know our players are, are pumped and excited when they found out today uh, who we get to play. And, and the Orange Bowl is one of the best bowls we've ever been to in terms of the, the sunshine and the beach and getting to enjoy it and being in sunny South Florida. So uh, a major congratulations to FSU and Coach Norville and his staff, but also to uh, the Orange Bowl uh, committee and, and the people that host the Orange Bowl. Our players are looking very forward to it. 
Perfect. Thank you so much, Coach Smart. Um, now let's uh, pass it over to Coach Norvell to open it up with some remarks, and then we'll open it up to everyone for both questions. So, Coach Norvell, we'll throw it over to you. Thank you. Yeah, you know, us today has been an emotional day. Uh, you're coming off of last night. Uh, you know, uh, just so proud of our team. You know, finishing up uh, undefeated uh, season, ACC champions. Um, you know, uh, absolutely uh, respect the opportunity that's here at the Orange Bowl. And uh, there's such a great history uh, with Florida State and, and the Orange Bowl. And uh, to be able to get matched up against the best team in college football over the last three years. And, uh, you know, you look at Coach Mart and the job they've done. Uh, this is a special team that we're going to go against. Obviously, last night did not go how they wanted. Um, but uh, you, this is a team that's really set the standard uh, over the over the last few years and the work that's gone in. I've got a lot of respect for Coach Smart. Um, you know, over the way that he operates a program, um, you know, the, the consistency that they've shown and, uh, you know, to be able to to match up them uh, with them uh, in what I believe is two of the best teams in, in, in all of college football here this year. Um, it's really going to be a, a, a special matchup. Uh, you know, I know our players, you know, they're disappointed. Uh, you'll hear today with the news of, of not getting a, a chance to compete for, for a national championship. But, uh, you know, we've had a team that's responded throughout the course of the year. And, uh, you know, they responded to adversity uh, they've had to fight through they've had to overcome uh, you know I believe in the heart and the character of this team and uh, you know I know that they will uh, uh, respond once again and uh, you know, it's going to take uh, you know a, a tremendous effort on our part uh, but I know we're, I know we're excited for the opportunity to be a part of this uh, tremendous game uh, with all the historic you know the historical value that comes to it and uh, you know just to be able to to play against uh, you know such an outstanding opponent uh, in Georgia and it's going to be one that the fan bases are are going to be excited about about, you know, be able to to be here in our home state, uh, you know, to, to be down in Miami uh, to get a chance to uh, to compete, you know, once again uh, for this team to showcase their identity and who we are and what we're uh, you know, truly aspiring to be. Uh, you know, I'm just grateful for the opportunity. Thank you so much, Coach. We will now open it up for questions for both coaches. To ask a question, please click on the raise hand function on your Zoom screen. We'll go through and get through as many questions as possible. Once called upon, you'll have to please unmute yourself, state your name and your affiliation before asking your question. And we will kick it off with Andrea Adelson. Go ahead, Andrea. Hi, uh, this question is for uh, Coach Norvell. Mike, we saw your reaction uh, on television when Alabama was placed into the number four spot. I was just wondering if you could tell us what was going through your mind in that moment when you put your head down and then what you said to the team afterwards? Um, you know, I was just hurt for our players. I mean, to be honest with you, that was, uh, um, you know, it was one of the tougher moments that I've had to experience. And, you know, just for all that they've done, you know, you talk, you, you talk to a team about, uh, you know, responding to adversity, getting up and going to, uh, uh, give all that you can to be able to find a way to win a college football game. And, it, you know, like Coach Smart said, it is hard. I mean, it's hard to do. It's hard to, um, you know, to, especially when you face some of the adversities that, that we've had uh, you here this year, whether it's injury or just different things to overcome. But, uh, um, you know, it's it's all part of it. And, uh, you know, as we tell our team all the time, you know, you, your truest identity shows up in, in times of great adversity. And we faced it and, you know, they put it on display. Um so that was that was really that uh, that feeling in the moment, and with all due respect to, uh, you know, I put out a statement about the, uh, uh, you know, about the committee and my 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 feelings on that decision, uh, out of respect for the Orange Bowl and the opportunity we have. I would like to keep any questions, uh, you know, focused on this this matchup, um, and uh, you know, obviously if there's there's any other follow up at a different time, you know, I'll, I'll be welcome. But let's respect the Orange Bowl and the opportunity that we have here, uh, not so much on the decision uh, of the committee. Thanks, Andrea. Next, we will go over to Mike Griffith. Uh, Mike, go ahead. Kirby, I think I think Georgia's won six bowl games in a row. Going back to that that Baylor Sugar Bowl, you you kind of changed a, a direction on players that only players that were playing were going to the bowl games. Your your program shown commitment uh, even to non playoff games. Can you talk about? Um, that connectedness, and I guess you probably saw Kendall Milton had some strong comments after the game about his commitment to play in this game and not abandoning uh, his brothers. 
Yeah, I, I didn't see his comments actually. I, right before I got on here, I, I mean, I've been just swamped this 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 time of year for college football coaches. I don't think people actually acknowledge. I haven't watched one thing outside of the the, the naming of the the four because it's also uh, close to the the you know the portal opening and these teams that played in championship games today is like drinking water through a fire hose. Um, so I have not seen anything posted by Kendall um, or I did t- talk to our team and uh, they are very excited. And I think of all the bowl games we could be in outside the playoff. This is where our kids would have loved to have been. So that that part is good. And I think we, we got a really high character team, really a uh, bunch of fun guys to coach. Uh, the, the, the guys that want to play in it, they, they're going to continue with us. They're going to enjoy that. We'll have guys going to the portal and guys look for, uh, you know, the, the, the future's bright for them, maybe at other places. And that's what the portal's for. So we'll lose out on some guys like everybody in the country will. But the guys that come back, they're, they're going to be a commitment to getting ready, getting better. It's not just about this game. It's about the practices you get to have for this game. Um, and a lot of guys are going to be guys that, that, that play for us next year that are going to have to get, you know, 15 practices or 13 practices that they get ready almost like an extra spring practice, not to mention the mid-years that come in and get to practice with you too. So this is a tremendous time to develop and get better. And uh, we're going to, we're going to do, we're going to do all we can to get our team in the best shape they can to be ready to go compete against Florida State. Thank you. Next, we're going to go over to Dan Tortora. Dan? I have a question for both coaches. Uh, Coach Smart, first and foremost, uh, like you said, having players that will play and and some won't be there. Fran Brown, one of your assistants, has moved on to Syracuse. Would love to get your thoughts on what Syracuse is getting and just what he brought to your program. And Mike, uh, speaking of bringing to your program, just Jordan Travis and the legacy that he leaves with Florida State. Yeah, uh, I'll go first with Fran. He's an incredible person, human being, beautiful family. Uh, nobody's more upset than my 11 year old son, who was was one of his best friends was Braden Fran's son. When he first came down, they got to be buddies, and and they now they they spent really a, a year, two years together. And Fran's just an incredible person. I think anybody that's met Fran knows he impacts uh, people. He has great relationship strengths. Uh, he'll be awesome for Syracuse. They're getting a, a great recruiter, a great leader. Uh, and he's going to do a great job. He knows everybody in the Northeast, so better watch out up there because he's he's he knows everybody in Philly. Yeah, to uh, to touch on Jordan, um, you know, just a special man. Um, you know, the the example he's been for our football team, uh, the way that he's grown, uh, the work that he's put in, uh, the way that he approaches every day. You know, just whether it's practice, meeting rooms, uh, you know, what he's doing in the classroom. I mean, he really. Uh, he approached every day as a champion. And uh, I think that he's been one of the, um, you know, the bright lights of college football that uh, you see somebody that was in a challenging, tough moment uh, that has really, uh, you improved at a, at a drastic level. Um, you know, he's become one of the best players in, in the country, um, you know, and, and he did it the right way. He cares about people, cares about this university, cares about his teammates, uh, you know, and unfortunately he got injured, uh, uh, you know, and, and, you know, that was the end of his playing career, but, you know, even through that, I mean, he's been he's been so present in everything that he could be uh, just to help his teammates to continue to be uh, you know supportive to the, the encourager and I mean just he's he's what's right about college athletics and uh, you know just so glad to, to have his example and you know he's just a wonderful seminal. All right, thank you. Let's go next to Chip Towers. Yeah, I guess I guess I'll ask Kirby about this. For uh, Kirby, you, you, you've uh, become well known for being a great motivator for your teams. Can you just talk about the aspect of, you know, getting FSU in this type of situation, a team that's obviously going to feel very slighted. They're obviously good enough to be undefeated. Uh, you know, it's almost uh, feels like you guys might be, you know, walking into a kicked hornet's nest or something like that. Can you just talk about the dynamic? And I'm, I'm sure is – upset as you guys were about how things turned out there's some empathy here as well right uh yeah i mean i empathize with anybody that that goes undefeated and doesn't get in i empathize with our players because i personally feel like we deserve to be in so i mean we've got a really good football team and we're considered number one in the country all year and then fail so we got a hornet's nest around here too of some players that are disappointed too so that works both ways the good news is we got each other 
to go play. And uh, I know they'll be up for us and we'll be up for them. You worry a lot more um, when you have a matchup that they might not uh, look us forward to. And I don't know who that would be because it shouldn't be that way, but it is that way. And I've learned that. I also think that uh, uh, it's 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 a time for coaches to uh, grow their team, grow their roster and grow the depth and still get to play in a game. Um, and there, but we're going to have kids that didn't play a lot during the year. They're going to have an opportunity to, that we're getting better at the end of the year. They're going to get a chance to play because of the, the, the red shirt rule and things. The postseason play. So I'm excited about those opportunities. But um, I, I know our kids. I know FSU is going to be up for us, so we're going to rely on each other to have that to be able to go out and uh, and play a great game. And look, nobody knows better the the Ford team. I, I don't know if this is correct, but I think we've been fifth or sixth or finished fifth or sixth more than anybody, and uh, that, that's tough. It's tough. I can't imagine it being undefeated, but it's tough when you finish uh, fifth or sixth one out of it because there's always a case uh, for for being in it. And we've been there. Uh, I know maybe two or three times. All right, thanks. We're going to go next to Mark Stallworth. Go ahead, Mark. All right, good, good evening, uh, coaches. Uh, my name is Mark Stallworth. I'm with the Miami Times newspaper. Uh, I have a question for both of you all. Uh, just can you just touch on the, the significance of this being the 90th uh, Orange Bowl as well as the impact that this may have on recruiting? I know you guys are impactful in the, the uh, transfer portal, but just high school recruiting and the the outcome of this game may have a totem pole regarding that. Well, I mean, you know, I, just, I just believe that the the Orange Bowl, I mean, it's it's a special game. And, uh, you know, the impact uh, not only uh, of the game and the, and the event, but really of the whole week and the impact in South Florida uh, to the community. And, you know, that's uh, that's one of the things as you get to experience as you're down there recruiting, you you see just what the, the, the Orange Bowl does to, um, you know, to the youth sports programs, to, to helping, you know, facilitate opportunities for, for young kids that uh, you have a dream of, of becoming college all players to come to a Florida state, to come, to go to Georgia, to, to have, have the open doors of, 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 you know, uh, of what their future can be. And uh, the Orange Bowl has been just such a, a staple uh, for opportunity. And uh, to be able to be a part of the 90th uh, you know, game is, is, is special. And, you know, it does have a great uh, recruiting impact. I mean, you know, we, a lot of our uh, best players are from South Florida, and it's going to be a, a chance for them to be able to go home and uh, to, to be able to play in front of their uh, their families and, uh, you know, just to, to be able to, to showcase, you know, once again, you know, the identity of our team and uh, where we're going and what we're uh, what we're building here in Tallahassee. So it's it's going to be a great opportunity for us. Yeah, I agree with what Mike said. I mean, the, 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 there's no greater place to recruit than, than Miami, Florida. Kids love football. The kids down there are different. They come in ready to play. There's no anxiety. There's They don't fear anyone. So the kids we've had in our program from that area are – are incredible. So getting to play down there uh, allows us to to stretch out our tentacles and and have contacts. And uh, there's a lot of good play programs in the state of Florida. But we've been very fortunate to have three or four first rounders come out of that area. So I love when we get a chance to go down there and play. Thank you. Next, we will go over to Seth Emerson. Go ahead, Seth. This is for Kirby. Uh, not the last two years, but you, this isn't your first rodeo in the kind of opt out of bowl era. Have you found that there's any sort of balance between a benefit to playing younger guys and maybe getting a sneak peek towards what your next team is going to be, but also trying to win the game? Yeah, I, I, I think it was the year. I don't know if it was the Texas year. I don't remember what year it was, Seth, but man, we had a. Uh, it was a struggle. It was it was tough. It was uh, there's a lot of disappointment, I think. And, and, and we just took the motto that, hey, you're either in or you're out, man. It's that simple. We're going to go. Uh, we're going to go compete. We're going to go uh, practice. We're going to uh, have our practices and get after it after a long, tough, grueling year with a championship week on top of it. But we're going to this is what we're going to do. And we're going to practice this many times and you're going to buy into it or you're not. And the, the, it's how the teams win. It's how you win is be committed to the calls and be all in on it. And if you're wondering or trying to decide, then you probably don't need to. That forces you to play some younger kids, especially with the timing of the portal now. I mean, this thing is is people really don't understand what's going on in college football right now. So with the timing of that and the ramp up of number of kids uh, entering in general, you, you can't even play the game without uh, playing some new faces. 
So uh, I don't know what – I don't even know what that looks like right now for us, but I'm sure there will be some guys take on some roles uh, that they're moving towards uh, next year. Thanks, Coach. All right, we got time for just a few more. I want to be respectful to both these coaches' times. Let's go over to Connor Riley. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, this is for both coaches. With how close you guys got to this year to getting into the playoff and obviously both feeling like you were deserving um, – participants do you does that make you look forward next year to a 12 team playoff more and maybe even wish that you had a 12 team playoff this year to be to participate in go ahead mike yeah yeah i mean i think that uh you'll be able to have an opportunity to compete for a national championship when you have a year that um like like we and and uh, we had and that georgia had i mean you know it's it's just it is disappointing you know you you look at this georgia team and, and i'm gonna say it for coach smart you go undefeated uh you know, throughout the regular season you lose in a conference championship game uh by you know one score and um and that be you know, that'd be the end of your opportunity to win a national championship. Uh, it's hard, you know, for us, you know, we go undefeated uh, you throughout the season and, you know, accomplish, you know, the things that we did, um, you know, it's, you, you try to teach players, uh, you know, about response. You try to teach players about consistency, you know, the things that, uh, uh, that you want to see them grow and build in and, um, you know, knowing that next year it will be an expanded uh, expanded opportunity when teams compete at this level that uh, you know, both of our programs have have uh, you know been able to 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 accomplish this year you know there will still be that avenue uh, but you know it is what it is this year um you know, obviously we can have have our disappointments but uh, you know, like i said respect the opportunity that we have and of all the games that uh, that are out there in this bowl season uh you know, there's not one that will be you know you know more exciting or probably more anticipated than you know having these two teams because you know, like i said this is a uh, um, you know it's a, it's a special group and a lot of great players on both sides and i think uh, you know, coaching staffs that respect each other and and how they go about their business so it's going to be a, it's going to be one a fun one for our players to compete in obviously the uh, the, the venue and, and this bowl game is special and um, but you know absolutely that, that next year with 12 I mean it's going to be uh, it's going to open those doors for you know the best team to really be able to prove itself uh, you know out there on the field when they when they put themselves in this situation yeah Connor I I don't I don't want to I don't want to be long-winded because I could talk for a long time but you know football is a very unique sport and it's unlike other sports and it's hard to say, because I've always wanted to say, you know, the 64 tournament basketball team, the baseball team, the soccer team, all these sports I follow in college sports, and I love college sports. They're pure people. I go watch college athletics all over the country. I love watching it. They can go have these big pools and big tournaments to determine who the national champion is, and it just seems fair and nobody's upset with it. And college football – hasn't really been able to get that done because it's much harder in a sport where you play uh, the game is so physical and it's once a week and you can't have a 64 team playoff at the end of a regular season. So the model becomes what is the appropriate model and where is the number? Um, and they've landed now on 12. Um, there will be a debate over who's 13, 14. There'll always be that debate. I certainly don't think it will be an undefeated uh, team that, that gets left out of that. It may be from a, a non-power five, but when you look at it and you say the, the playoff model that the NFL's put in place, you know, it's earned on the field. They have a lot more parity than we do. There's a lot, I mean, there's eight and eight teams making the the playoffs and it, you know, their schedule gets set for them from a league. Um, and the schedule set that way. So there's a little more balance when it comes to it. But if you look at the bigger picture, you know, until it's regulated by some supreme body, it's probably not going to be balanced. It's going to be led by conferences that are merging together in different forms. And you're never going to be able to have a long tournament because people can't play these number of games uh, that long. So we'll find out how the 12 works. Certainly would have been good for Georgia the last four to five years because you know we'd have been we'd been in the hunt we'd have been we would have had a shot just like uh fsu this year so we'll see where it goes in the future all right we got time for one more question allison go ahead allison hey allison michelangelo with wsb in atlanta kirby this one's for you i didn't know um how many guys are you expecting maybe to not play in this game and when do you have that conversation with the guys about when they'll play and when they will not play uh, Allison, I, I, you know, it's probably going to happen throughout the week. I, they, they need some time to decompress. I mean, uh, I, I, you know, I, I'm not expecting anyone 
to not play, to be honest with you. But when that conversation comes, we'll have those conversations with them. We'll talk to them. I know we'll have some uh, enter the portal. That Those conversations have been happening for, for several weeks now uh, leading up to uh, this time. So we'll have – guys enter the portal and and uh and and, and opt to, to not play in the game but um I, i'll be honest with you i'm really not stressing or worried about it right now uh I, we, we've got a week to kind of get ourselves together and our guys will take some time off take a little break they need and get back and get to working out and getting to throw in and getting some practice time but it's not a major concern for me right now because i know that we have a, a good core of our team that's going to be there and, and want to play i don't i just don't have specifics though all right, thank you, coaches. Uh, best of luck in your preparations for the 90th Capital One Orange Bowl. Just a quick reminder for all media, apply for credentials and hotel reservations at orangebowl.org backslash credentials. And we're looking forward to seeing both coaches here this Thursday in South Florida, December 7th, for the Capital One Orange Bowl kickoff press conference, which starts at Hard Rock Hotel Hollywood at 3 p.m. sharp. I see a lot of our local Miami, South Florida media on here, so we're looking forward to seeing you all out there on Thursday. That will conclude today's press conference. Have a great evening, and we'll see you all soon. Thank you again, coaches, and best of luck. Thank you.